Hello everybody, I am Dr. Sonali Pawar from Dada Patil College, Karsa and this is my video lecture on the topic Enterprise as an Allegory. Friends, the reference I have used for this video lecture is New Indian English Poets and Poetry, a book written by Dr. Javan Kulpilak. Let us see the introduction first. Nisim Ezekiel is the most outstanding Indian poet writing in English. Enterprise is one of his finest lyrics published in 1959 in his volume The Unfinished Man. Let me remind you the title of our topic that Enterprise as an Allegory. So, let us first see what is an allegory. Allegory is a technique of vision, a way of conveying abstract, moral and religious truths in an easy and simple manner so that they may easily be comprehended by the people at large. So, allegory is a technique of conveying abstract truths in an easy manner which can be easily comprehended by the common people. The next main important point about the allegory is it is a piece of literary composition with a hidden moral lesson. Allegory always have a hidden moral lesson for the human convenience. So, see once again Allegory is a technique of conveying abstract truths in an easy manner. It is easily comprehended by the people at large and it has usually a hidden moral lesson. Now see the poem Enterprise as an allegory. Enterprise is an allegory of human condition on the earth. Now see in this poem Enterprise there is a group of people who undertake a journey moved by noble aspirations but it aims in failure and frustrations. It is symbolic of the human attempts at some noble achievement. Means according to the poet he want to tell us that this is the same case happens with the human efforts at some noble achievement. He want to do something large, something great. But his journey of that achieving something great ends in failure and frustrations. And that is the reality. We can also see that enterprise is a poem. It is as a metaphor. Actually, enterprise is a short poem in six stanzas of five lines each. In all, there are 30 lines in this poem with rhyme scheme and music. As we have seen, such is the human condition, the human predicament and the man must learn to live with heat as long as he is a denizen of this earth. The man has to do his best, he has to try his level best, but he cannot expect always success in his life. This is the human predicament. The situation is ordinary and commonplace, but its very ordinariness makes it a metaphor for man's journey on this earth. Now see, a detailed analysis of the poem is necessary to bring home the point. In this poem, Nisim Ezekiel has told us the story of a pilgrimage. So what is that pilgrimage? A number of people, including the poet, decide to go to uh, decide to go on a pilgrimage. They are all city dwellers, and the journey they undertake is to some romantic, primitive hinterland. They start with hope, courage, and determination. The first stage of their journey has hope, courage and determination with their minds full of noble ideas and ideals. They are out to make some heroic effort which will lead, they hope, to some noble achievement. 
Their minds are exalted and they are not afraid of any dangers and difficulties. All burdens seem to them to be light in the first stage of their journey. This first stage of their journey is symbolic of the stage of Eden innocence, Edenic innocence, which man enjoys in his boyhood and early youth, when he is entirely unconscious of the human predicament, of the frustrations and failures which life brings at every stage. It is said that the man in his each and every stage of life go on changes, mentally, physically, again, uh, with the intellectual also he faces some changes, his nature can go on changing because of the experiences he has taken at each and every stage of his life. And according to poet, the first stage of our life, our maturity, that is the early youth. In that early youth, we have the innocent innocence which no longer remains as it was in our later youth. And this innocence, uh, Mr. Minskel has compared with the Edenic innocence. See, what is that Edenic innocence? Eden Garden. You must remember that. In Christian mythology, in Bible, there is a reference of Eden Garden. That is, in paradise, the first man and the first woman, Adam and Eve, were living. They were under uh, God's control and guidance and they have the innocent faith in God. Whatever God would suggest them, order them, they have to obey. With even that innocence, the travelers are uh, doing their pilgrimage in the first stage. Now we would turn to the next stage of their pilgrimage. But their paradisal felicity and innocence are soon lost. In the next stage of their journey, the pilgrims are faced with dangers and difficulties. They continue on their onward journey of exploration, but they do not care to find out if the urge is sufficiently strong in them, whether the romantic call of the remote and the distant is powerful enough to enable them to face the dangers that lie before them. This is an untested idealism, untested by the experience of practical day to day, uh, practical day to day life. Their rage, their passion for some heroic endeavor is as hot as the hot sun above their heads. Now see, heat of the sun is again symbolic of hostility of nature to man's aspirations. The sun beat down upon them to match their rage. It seems that the objects and forces of nature are out to frustrate human endeavor. The oppressive heat of the sun thus becomes symbolic of the hostility of nature to human idealism and heroic aspirations. The more hotly we humans aspire, the more hotly nature tries to beat us down. So, we can see that in our journey of life, we have to face some natural problems also. Nature is not always very cooperative with us in our life's journey. In the same manner, this pilgrimage, uh, in this pilgrimage, the pilgrims also experience that the heat of the sun is not um, cooperative to them. It is the symbolic of hostility of nature to man's aspirations. Further, the group of travelers is able to put up very well with dangers and difficulties for some time. They all have the noble aspirations, they all are together and so they can overcome the dangers and difficulties of their uh, voyage. They continue to journey in hope. They take notes as they move along. They note down the goods being bought and sold by the peasants. They pass through three cities where a sage had taught but do not care to find out what he had taught and what his message was. 
They also observe the ways of serpents and goats and note them down. So they face very many things, very many people, very many animals during their pilgrimage. Their idealism soon degenerates into the trivial and the commonplace. This is the human dilemma. They face difficulties, they were together, they were hopeful, but slowly they get tired of those dangers and difficulties all were scattered in their journey. They were in two minds, human dilemma. This is the human dilemma. Man cannot remain true in his own self for any length of time. So the first innocence has gone and now its place has taken the human dilemma whether to continue our journey or not and so on. There are too many distractions and diversions and steadfastness and singleness of purpose are needed and must be painstakingly cultivated. So in the next stage of their pilgrimage the pilgrims face dangers and difficulties. They face some natural uh, causes, natural difficulties and their human dilemma never allows them to remain true to their own self forever. Now further we can see the complete change in the pilgrims. The difficulties and dangers posed by man's physical environment are not so damaging as those that result from his own insufficiency. Soon there are differences of opinion among the travelers and they begin to quarrel over petty matters. They had to cross a piece of wasteland, a desert patch and they could not agree as to the best way of doing so. So on petty matters they started quarreling with each other. But they do not leave their journey. They continue their onward journey. One of their friends, rather proud of his stylish clothes, was so angry that he left their company. The shadow of discord fell on their enterprise. They become divided. They cannot be of one opinion. And so, the shadow of discord fell on their enterprise and it has continued to grow. Bickerings over petty matters, needless quarrels over trifles, hatred of, hostility to, those who told different opinions, those who hold different opinions is ingrained in human nature. Not, not all people can have the same opinion. There are diversity of opinions and so they quarrel over the petty matters. Understanding is totally absent in this group in the next stage of their journey. Thus, man carries the seed of his failure and frustration within his own self. So do these pilgrims, who, despite their quarrel, continue their onward journey. They quarrel, they have different diversity of opinions, but they continue their journey on and on. But now they are divided into groups. They are not together. They are divided into groups, each group attacking the other. Engrossed in their internecine quarrel, they lose their ways. That is, forget their noble aspirations which had motivated the enterprise. Their goal and their purpose are forgotten and their idealism is all gone which was there in the first stage of their journey. It has gone in the third stage of their journey, last stage of their journey. Some of them decide to leave the group. Frustration and difficulties overwhelm the human spirit. And many do not have the courage to face the realities of life. They seek relief in escape and withdrawal. Many of them are such introverts. Some try to pray and seek divine assistance and blessings, forgetting that God helps those who help themselves. Their leader feels that he smelled the sea. 
The main is he feels that they have betrayed their end and they now must go back. Their pilgrimage must end according to their leader because the situation is not in under his control. So the pilgrimage was a total failure until the end of their pilgrimage comes. Still they do not stop. They persist. Though their journey has lost all its significance, they persist. They have lost their idealism, their heroic aspiration and they notice nothing as they move along. Why they are moving ahead? Where they are going? They don't know. They have no any direction, no any aspiration and they are going ahead without any uh, aspiration. They are no longer a disciplined group of devoted idealists, but only a struggling crowd of a few defeated, tired and hopeless survivors who continue to trudge along and as such are symbolic of the essential truth of man's pilgrimage on this earth. I would like to tell you that before this coronavirus epidemic, the people who are unstoppably running after the progress, money, happiness in their life. They must think in their minds that what am I doing? Why am I not stopping? Why am I not enjoying my life? The same case I still remember while teaching this point. And coronavirus gave us a chance to stop, to lead our life happily to enjoy the company of our family members, isn't it? So, this situation we can compare with this pilgrimage, isn't it? So, these uh, hopeless survivors and their situation, all these things are symbolic of the essential truth of man's pilgrimage on this earth. The same is the life the man is leading on this earth today. They are dirty and shabby for they have been deprived of such common needs as so. They are broken in spirit and bent down physically. Now see this is the case with the travelers. But what is our case? We have enough money but we have no time to enjoy it. We have the family but we don't we can't enjoy their company isn't it so these are the simple things we cannot buy in the money with the help of money so this poem the situation of these uh, pilgrims is symbolic of essential truth of man's pilgrimage on this earth such is the ultimate end of all human enterprises this is the essential truth of human life. Absorbed in their petty quarrels, tired, exhausted, frustrated and at bay, the travelers do not even hear the thunder and even if they do so, they ignore its significance. See? Nowadays, even the youngsters have to face heart attack, BP, again sugar problems, isn't it? A stage comes in our life when the life, when our body, when our mind tells us just stop, just think in your mind what you are doing, what you have to do. You have to do this and this first. For example, you have to do the medical checkup. You have to enjoy the money. You have to enjoy the family members' company and so on. But man never listens. In the same manner, these pilgrims listen the thunder which is the symbolic of spiritual regeneration and fertility. Our mind tells us how to behave in our life, in the particular situation. But we do not pay attention towards such thunder, such spiritual regeneration, our minds. That is the meaning. So the people, the pilgrims, hear the thunder and they ignore it. Now see, the thunder is symbolic of spiritual regeneration and fertility, but they do not care for it. 
the extreme hopelessness of man at the end of life's journey is the stressed when we have time we have no money when we have money we have no time when we have big house there are no children when we have children we have no big house so such is the case of human journey hopelessness is there at the end of our journey life's journey and this is um, this one is the symbolic of such our life's journey the extreme hopelessness of man at the end of life's journey is the stress to hear the urge and the enthusiasm for the inner meaning soon wear out and disillusionment is so dark and deep that all hopes of inner illumination or spiritual regeneration are lost nothing not even the thunder over the hills can shake off human apathy so nobody now can do their help no nature neither god nor nature nor the human being himself can help such hopeless people the disillusionment of the pilgrims is total and they even come to doubt the very worth and significance of their journey it seems to them to have been meaningless and futile all their noble aspirations are forgotten there is sorrow and suffering on every face and they are conscious of the fact that their actions have neither been great nor rare human life is like a tale told by an idiot signifying nothing so that is the end of this uh, pilgrimage and that is the same end of each and every modern man's human life now see as we have discussed before each and every allegory has a story and that story has a moral in the same manner the story poem this allegorical poem enterprise also has a moral see what is the moral the last line of this poem is so characteristic of ezekiel's condensed aphoristic style it contains moral of the lyric efforts and uh, efforts to escape from the realities of human existence are futile see what is the first moral of this story you cannot escape from the realities of life if you do your best to escape from the realities the efforts are futile so you have to face the realities of life secondly then what we can do we must accept the limitations of our lot of our life and thirdly we have to do our best within those limitations see what the poet what kind of moral what kind of uh, suggestion the poet want to tell you through this poem the moral is you cannot escape from the realities of life the efforts to escape from realities of life are futile then what we have to do accept the limitations of our lot in life heroically we have to be heroic we have to be brave to accept the limitations of our lot to accept the realities of life and what we have to do with that same heroic spirit we have to do our best in the service of god and humanity we have to do our best for our own progress no doubt but we have to do our best in the service of god and humanity too and that is the moral of this poem this musical wants to share with us let us turn to the conclusion of the poem listen ezekiel himself said that the lyric was written for personal therapeutic purpose to analyze examine and explore his own feelings of loss and deprivation friends here i would like to remind you my early video lecture on the topic background casual 
that is autobiographical poem by Mr. Mezekiel. And in that poem, we have seen that because of Jewish background, Mr. Ezekiel has to face so many problems, frustrations, tensions in his whole life. Isn't it? So, to relieve from those tensions, hmm, to express those frustrations, he has turned to poetry. He becomes a poet and by sharing his own tensions and predicaments, he becomes a great poet. So this poem is a very good example of such, po uh, such poems by uh, the great poet Nisim Ezekiel. So as he has seen, see first uh, once again, this poem is a personal therapeutic purpose having poem which has the expression of Nisim Ezekiel's personal tensions and frustrations and through this poem he has tried his level best to find relief from his own tensions. So, we can see here that the poet is searching for his identity also. This poem is also a good example where we can see the poet's own quest for identity. And yes, he found out himself as a great poet through these poems. One more thing we have seen that how this poem is an allegory, how it is a symbol, how it is a metaphor for the human condition on the earth. So, it is also convincing that this lyric, this beautiful lyric is an allegory of human condition on the earth. Thank you.